Hi, my name is Peter Diamandis. I'm the chairman and CEO of the XPRIZE Foundation and the chairman and co-founder of Singularity University. I'm also the co-author with Stephen Kotler of this book, Abundance, The Future is Better Than You Think. I'd like to share with you why we wrote this book. You see, most people think that the world is getting worse. I remember this one couple a few years ago debating whether it was morally right to bring a child into the world. But the fact is that the world is getting better at an extraordinary rate, and most people are unable to see the good news through the flurry of bad. And in this book, we'll talk about how your cognitive biases, in fact, shape the way you think about the world. If you stop and you look at the actual details, the science and engineering, the facts and the forces that are shaping our planet, and we do that in detail in abundance, what you'll see is that the world over the last 50 years has grown far better, far stronger than the last 500. In the last 50 years, the global standards of living and global income have tripled. We have literally seen a 30% increase in food supply, per capita food supply. In the last 100 years, we've seen infant mortality decrease by 99% at the same time that the human lifespan has doubled. We've seen reading rates around the world go from 25% to over 80%. And we are literally at the lowest time of homicide on the planet ever since the Middle Ages. People don't realize this because we're so barraged by the negative news coming in through our living room, through our laptops, through our Twitter feeds, whatever it might be. But our goal was to, in fact, share the details for people to see that we are living in a stronger and better world. And to understand what the forces are that are driving this in that direction. So in this book, you'll learn about the four forces driving us towards a world of abundance. The first is exponential technologies. The fact that any technology that becomes an information technology jumps on Moore's law. And you and I both know Moore's law. It's the fact that when you go to your computer store, the computer you buy today is twice as fast as the computer from last year for the same price. Well, that same kind of improvement is now going in synthetic biology, AI, robotics, infinite computing, digital medicine, uh, computers and networks. All of these areas are growing at extraordinary rates. But the other thing is that they're becoming democratized, meaning that you and I have access to these technologies. That drives us to the second force, the DIY innovator. The fact that individuals and small companies and small teams of people can get access to things and have power that only governments and large corporations ever had before. So literally, you have folks like Bert Rutan, who won the Ansari X Prize, building a private spaceship with 30 people that would have taken a government program or a large multi-billion dollar company to do just 20 or 30 years ago. You'll read about the whole DIY bio movement and how synthetic biology is now being experimented by literally high school kids who are redesigning bugs and algae. But what does that mean? It means that they'll be able to redesign foods and ways to purify water. So DIY innovation is an extraordinary force. The third force is the techno-philanthropists. The fact that people are getting wealthier, younger. And these individuals, perhaps many of you, I know it's not myself yet, but someday, are literally able to use their wealth to change the world. Instead of building buildings to their names, they're focused on slaying diseases, changing problems. The final force, for me perhaps, is one of the most important ones. It's called the rising billion. In 2010, there were two billion people on the internet worldwide. By 2020, that number is projected to go from 2 billion to 5 billion, meaning 3 billion new minds are coming online, are being connected via Android phones or low-cost tablets. What will those 3 billion new minds want? What will they consume? But more importantly, what will they sell? What will they develop? What will they invent? You see, as they enter into the global meta-intelligence, these are individuals who are going to help to solve the world's problems. And those four forces, exponential technologies, the DIY innovator, the techno-philanthropist, and the rising billion, are driving us towards a world of abundance.
So what will you get out of this book? For me, first and foremost, I believe it's going to be hope and understanding that the world is, in fact, getting better. You'll have in this book the charts, the graphs, the data. We have 90 different charts in the back of all the data that we've uncovered showing that the world is getting better. And you'll be able to argue this or share this with your friends or family. And if you're running a company or an organization, be able to chart out the future and how the world is going to change over the next 10 years as we enter a world of abundance where the, the needs of every man, woman, and child are met. How will this affect us in water, in energy, in food, in healthcare, in education, in democracy? These are all fundamental areas. So just as an example, if you think about a Maasai warrior in the middle of Africa on a cell phone, that individual has better mobile communications today than the President of the United States did 25 years ago. And if they're on Google, they've got access to more information than the President did 15 years ago. They're living in a world of information and communications abundance. That same concept is going on in water, in energy, in food, in healthcare, in education, in extraordinary fashion. We talk about each of those in this book. So you're going to get hope out of this book. You're going to understand in chapter three about cognitive biases and how, in fact, uh, we, because of our evolutionary neurobiology, actually pay far more attention to the negative news than the good news. And once you understand that, it changes the way that you see the world. In this book, we have interviews with extraordinary individuals, literally people who are changing the world. Folks like Ray Kurzweil and Jeff Skoll and Elon Musk and Ariel Huffington and Larry Page and Eric Schmidt, individuals who through their companies and their technology and their work and their philanthropy are envisioning the world of the future and going and making it happen. So you'll meet them and you'll understand where they're taking it. But for me, the single most important thing that you'll get out of this book is a realization that you can be part of creating this future of abundance. That it's okay to stop complaining and stop waiting for someone else to do it. That you are empowered, like never before, to go and change this world. And you'll see how and where you can be involved. So I invite you to join us, get this book, share this book. In fact, on this page, there are two buttons. One button says, buy the book. And if you buy it now, as part of our pre-launch promotion between now and February 15th, I have a number of gifts that you'll get immediately, a number of benefits for buying the book early and being part of spreading the word. In fact, I'm going to see every pre-purchase that comes through, so I have an ability to say thank you to you uh, for, for getting this book. Instead of, uh, or in addition to buying the book, please consider also telling a friend. Uh, we're going to use the best of social media to spread the word. And in fact, changing and creating a world of abundance is a mindset. Stop believing the negative news. It's there. Yes, there are problems in the world. There'll always be problems. But the fact of the matter is, within our reach is the ability to create a world where the basic needs of every man, woman, and child are being met. Not in a hundred years, not in a thousand years, in our lifetimes. Join us.